Hello, Tim. Hey, you doing, Steven? I'm doing well. How are you? Um, not too bad. As you can see, the sun is shining bright, so I'm trying to find a good angle so that you uh, you don't uh, get blinded by my bald head. <laughs> I think it's the perfect angle. It's almost like the I used to watch Touched by an Angel with my family uh, when I was like five years old. So it reminds yeah. me. Reminds me. Yeah, of I remember that. That was a great show. I don't think any of them had as manly of a beard as you did. So I think. I don't know, man. Uh, what's his name that played uh, Mr. French? Not Mr. French. Um, uh, he played his best buddy on Little House in the Prairie. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's true. He was I pretty think. good in the, he was pretty good in that show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, Highway to Heaven. That's what it was with um, with uh, 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 Michael Landon. That's right. Oh, no. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I think his name was Victor French, if I'm not mistaken, the guy that played. I think but I could you're... be wrong. I'm trying to remember. I think you're right. I haven't thought about this since <laughs> my childhood. So it's very cool to have your, your head bring back those memories. There you go. Oh, man. Well, welcome to the show. I, I'm Stefan, by the way, and it's a pleasure to have you on. To, do you go by Tim or Timothy, by the way? Hey, you could call me Tim. That's great. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. And uh, this is a comedy advice podcast where we give advice with a little bit of comedy sprinkled in. So okay. we've, we've got some questions from fans that they've sent in that, that are they're just itching for us to answer. So we're going to give them that ointment in the form of advice. But before we do, I'd like to get to know my guests as, as well as my listeners, Tim McLaughlin, actor, writer, extraordinaire, bearded wonder that's okay. right <laughs> that's right maybe i should get on the uh, mount rushmore uh, list how about that you're not already on it i no, thought i should be i think you no. need to be sped up I, although i don't know yeah. how long it would take to get the details of the beard in how how many years yeah. has that been in the works by the way it's not years it's actually just months um i started i started growing it i had kind of a short short beard well trimmed um back around this time and mm -hmm. starting when the pandemic hit i said oh man i gotta i gotta do something different so i've been growing it since march so just about a year yeah wow wow it looks incredible almost as if it it, it needs a name almost it started to take a life of its own <laughs> it's amazing my wife says i should start its own instagram account <laughs> That's what she said. I said, I don't want to do that because I'm afraid it's going to get more followers than me. <laughs> I mean, if, irrelevant. if people are taking Instagram accounts for their cats and dogs, I don't see why a beard would be a problem. I, I, I can't, I can't argue that. <laughs> yeah. Beardograms trying to think of hashtags for that. Uh, follow like, uh, no, but anyway, anyway, you, here to talk about you, not the beard. You're an actor. I've seen you in CSI. You've also been in Monk. You've made a lot of different appearances and wanted to go way, way back. That's not a dig at you being old at all, but maybe just a little far back to when you were young. And uh, you ended up starting to get into it. I heard on an interview to impress a girl to get into acting. Yeah, that was back in high school, you know. God, what kid doesn't want to follow a girl around that he's, you know, totally enamored with when he's in high school? Oh, so man. I was so, I, I really was, I was, I was so head over heels for this girl and she was in the drama club and I had to be part of the drama club if I wanted to hang out with her, you know? So that's where it all started. Yeah. Oh man. And then how did it end up with the girl? Is that your wife right now or is that? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, no, no, no. She still uh, didn't have much interest in me. So, hey, those were the breaks, you know. I ended up uh, having another girlfriend my senior year in high school, and then we went on to, you know, prom. And then after that, it was, you know, college. I was on my own then. I didn't meet my wife until after I graduated college. Which, oh, okay. uh, probably, yeah, yeah. Probably was for the best because <laughs> I was. I needed to be more mature to handle that kind of a situation. Yeah, you know, I will agree with you. I as well. I had my fair share of 
um, smitten moments where I liked girls in high school and some of them worked yeah. out, some of them didn't. But I think if I had married one of them, I don't know how happy I would be. And definitely yeah. not as happy as with my wife that I met after college. And she is perfect. Ding, ding. Good score. <laughs> two yeah. points <laughs> <laughs> yeah swish so uh, but i wanted to talk a little bit more about the acting so you got into it and then it kind of stuck or did you just keep going into it sounds like you were in the drama club so it was more um like stage acting and yeah and that type yeah. of thing wow nice. yeah no i i i loved it from the moment i i was on stage um just getting reactions from the audiences, making them laugh, you know, bringing out those emotions really connected with me. And uh, even though that wasn't my original um, major when I went to college, I actually was an oceanography major, if you can figure that out. But well, after, about a after about a year, uh, I just couldn't stay away from it. I sort of jumped from oceanography to journalism and right into theater and uh, film and acting. And that's what my degree ended up being, a Bachelor of Fine Arts. From there, I went to Universal Studios in Orlando and got a job out of college and mm -hmm. really, uh, really pushed forward with it then. At what point did you realize that oceanography wasn't for you? <laughs> when I went up to my professor and I said, so what am I going to be doing with this degree? And he says, you're going to do one of three things. He says, you're either going to be teaching with me in a couple of years he says, you're going to be out on an oil drilling rig testing for mineral samples, or you'll be feeding Shamu down at SeaWorld. Oh. So <laughs> I was like, and he said, he said, the odds of the SeaWorld gig are slim to none. I said, oh, I had all these dreams about being like Jacques Cousteau and traveling all over the world. And he goes, yeah, he goes one out of maybe a million. He says, so go buy a lottery ticket and you'll have a better shot at it. <laughs> oh man. So you waved yeah. it goodbye. And, I uh, did. I said, well, I'm not spending uh, six weeks at a time on an oil drilling rig. I said, that's definitely not. Yeah. That's not in the cards for me. So yeah. So I moved on from it. You know, I still have a passion for the ocean. I love the ocean, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I also, I, I do love the ocean, but I don't get much of it living in Arizona. We've got uh, yeah. oceans of sand, but no, none of the water type. I think we also try and, we try and um, make believe or, or put things together that we call beaches. We've got Lake Havasu with mm -hmm. the little beach there. But um, other than that, it's, it's a dry... Yeah hot place yeah. with no well, not, well you know i've got my in-laws live in flagstaff so uh that's quite nice up there you know you're right right there by the grand canyon you get all the weather uh seasons and uh but uh you know it's just you know it's a different way of life yeah that's know? very true in flagstaff or fun fact in because those are the only facts i like but flagstaff arizona gets more snow than buffalo new york that is a very interesting fact. It, I'll have to I'll have to let my my in-laws know that. <laughs> <laughs> so strangely, it doesn't accumulate the snow like it does it accumulates yeah. in Buffalo, but because of the high elevation and I don't know what other factors go into it, but it snows mm -hmm. a lot there and some points it is the coldest place in the continental United States, not including Alaska. It's just, yeah. I don't know what time you visited. I don't know. Texas would have something to say about that right now. Oh my gosh. I was going to, I, <laughs> oh, I, I've been following. I usually don't listen to the news that much. I try to stay out of it, especially with the bad things going on right now. However, yeah. uh, my fellow Texans, I mourn for them because I was just hearing that they have to boil their water now because the plants that refine and, and treat their water are now down. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, my sister lives just outside of uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, and they live on a ranch. And so they have a well, so they're happy. They don't have to boil their water because they have a well, but uh, boy, she's been just crying a river the last couple of days with the on and off kind of electricity that's been going on. And, uh, you know, those damn windmills. And <laughs> so, yeah. 
Oh man. Well, I, I hope it gets warmer soon. I, th- I, I don't think it even hit here in the Southwest. Did it? I heard it yeah. hit uh, the Northeast yeah. pretty hard and Texas hard, yeah. but. Um, and the Northwest, my, my, my son is up in Spokane. He's been dealing with uh, single digit temperatures. So uh, I, it's kind of like it's, it's, it's do it does this big giant U, you know, the jet stream came down and it just literally just right into Texas, right out, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's brutal. It's brutal, but no, it's nice. It's like uh, 68 degrees here in uh, Southern California. And, um, and then my mom lives in uh, Florida and it's been in the eighties down there. So she's, oh my uh, gosh. yeah, You're- she's a, she's happy. <laughs> Your family is like T-Mobile. You've got national coverage everywhere. Oh, yeah, 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 Man. yeah. And my, I got another brother in Atlanta, Georgia, right now, and I've got, uh, I got, I got another brother in Tennessee. So oh, yeah, my, my family is literally, yep. We needed to spread out, you know, be just far <laughs> enough away from each other, not to, uh, you know, so we'd miss each other just enough. Right? Oh, good, good. I was hoping. Yeah. A Thanksgiving didn't go awry, and then everyone was like, "I need some space." <laughs> you get this territory, you get Northwest, you get Florida. Okay, uh, you know, different personalities. You know, my brother, uh, my uh, my younger brother, he moved to Tennessee about a couple years ago, and mm-hmm. um, semi-retired. He's military retired, and uh, he's happy as a clam there. And and my other brother was here in California, but. Uh, the whole COVID Gavin Newsom rules and everything destroyed his business. So he had to move to Atlanta because oh, you know, he's a, uh, he's a musician and him and his wife are musicians. So, hmm. you know, they, uh, they do independent, you know, concerts and things like that for youth. So, mm-hmm. yeah. You know? I was going to ask too, cause you, so you have two brothers and then there's you, do you have any other? I have, th- I have three brothers and me and uh, a sister. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have two brothers and two sisters. So there you go. Are you yeah. the middle kid? I'm the oldest. Yeah. Believe it or okay. not, I know I, I don't look responsible because you're I'm not. Crash, you're the crash test dummy, right? That's what you I were was growing up. The free babysitter for my parents. That's what I was. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that too. Free babysitter. And hey, let's find out if this works on our first kid. And then, <laughs> then we'll know what to do on the other four. Right. Pre- yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But I was going to ask amongst your siblings. So you said one was um, an enter- a uh, musician. Did you grow yeah. up in a family of entertainers? And did that help cultivate the acting? I know that was a little bit serendipitous with the, the pursuit yeah. of love. But no, no. Was- no. Uh, I, my uncles, I, my two uncles are uh, one uh, was an artist for DC Comics. And uh, another one was just an all around artist. And my father was a, an athlete. He was a baseball player. And wow. then uh, my mom was a little Italian lady who was pretty much a stay-at-home mom until I, you know, turned into my teens. And then, then they were both real estate agents. So no, no, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of entertainment uh, background from my mom and dad, no. Hmm. I think there's a fair amount of entertainment in little old Italian lady because my mom no. also <laughs> Italian lady. <laughs> There was a lot of mamma mia going around. It was yeah. a wonderful oh, yeah. time. Oh, the Christmas, the Christmas dinners at my grandparents' house were epic. I mean, uh, it was like, all right, we're going to get there at 10 o'clock. We're going to start eating at 1030 and we'll be done at around 115. So <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those four hour meals. That was just, it was great. And of course, trying to keep a bunch of uh, seven and eight year old kids sitting at a dinner table for three hours is is not a good idea back when there were no video games to play. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. So going back to your, your um, acting path, I know that you got your, you, you switched from oceanography, waited onto the shore to get your uh, degree in, you switched to journalism, then switched to. Um, yeah. Yeah. I did uh, journalism for about a semester and, and uh, you know, I just, I, I couldn't wait anymore. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I moved over to, moved over to theater and fine arts. Nice. And then, so uh, curious, once you finish your degree, what's the next step for going out and pursuing uh, jobs, gigs, uh, whatever the terminology is for it? You know, I Go sat and- back and I, I, I remember back and, and, and I, 
I try to think if any of the classes I took in college actually did any good in the real world. And um, uh, sad to say, for the most part, no, they didn't. Uh, I'd say maybe about three of my classes I took. Um, there was a lot of good, I, I did learn a lot of good skills. Um, uh, carpentry, <laughs> I learned some good <laughs> carpentry because everybody in the theater department had to learn how to build the sets. Um, I also got really good at sound designing because I was, uh, I did a lot of sound designing for some of the productions, but so yeah, you get a little, you get a little side skill that you didn't know you'd, uh, and you, and I, I certainly did use that in the real world. Um, mm -hmm. but, but it really wasn't until I came out to California. Um, I spent nine years working at Universal Studios. I did all their live stage shows and, wow. and that was great. Um, uh, one of my favorites that I did was the, uh, the Ghostbuster show, which uh, ran for four years. I played the Rick Moranis's Lewis Tully character, that uh, that the nerd, uh, you know, guy that was their accountant, and that was a great that was a great fun role to do. Lots of great fun, and um, worked with some really great people. I got to work with, um, uh, let's see, uh, several uh, big big well known actors. Uh, I believe um, Wayne Brady. Oh. Uh, he was there. He was there on the on the property. He was doing a different show, and I don't think we crossed paths. But um, uh, uh, Cheryl Hines uh, mm -hmm. was one that uh, that was right there. She worked a couple of times at the Ghostbuster show, and she also did some work at the Nickelodeon Studios before she came out to Hollywood. But uh, I mean, you know, it was really a great place to cut my teeth in the industry and, and just learn how to perform as an actor to to basically pay my bills you know <laughs> yeah and i was gonna ask too so that was all live mm -hmm. versus when you're on screen if something doesn't go right just take two yeah. but live I, I guess it gets easier every time you do it but what yeah. is it what is it like i mean i'm sure people are bound to make mistakes things aren't bound to go perfect how are you able to recover from that or what what's the protocol for Going it's on. called wing it it's called wing it <laughs> <laughs> improvise <That's, laughs> and and it was really it's really funny because we used to do up to six shows a day um each show was about 35 minutes long and uh we used to get bored because we knew the lines so well so of course it was it, it was our own little version of the carol burnett show we'd try to find stuff to throw the other actor off and uh uh you know, we get in all kinds of, of trouble and stuff like that, but it, it was a blast because it kept uh, it kept us fresh. It kept us enjoying the show and uh, the audience loved it, you know, especially if they came back and saw it multiple times. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, you know, it was just a way to learn how to um, how to navigate live stage. And I did. I learned a whole lot. And it's a lot. It is. It's a lot different than, than film and television. Like mm -hmm. you said, you get like a bazillion takes and, mm -hmm. you know, until you get it right. Mm -hmm. And then for the television, I, obviously in the opening credits that I crafted for you on, mm -hmm. from your IMDb page as well, you've had a lot of different roles on TV and um, I think a movie coming out as well. But I yeah, yeah. COVID kind of put the, put the brakes on that. And so we're still waiting to get into production on and while the COVID hit, it, uh, I think the writers decided to do some rewriting on it. So yeah, fingers crossed, hopefully it'll be happening this summer. So. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And did you just act in, in, what is the title of the film? The Warrior of Eight Flags is the name of the film. The and it's a really, really cool, it's, it's you know, martial arts. Um, it's got some really, really good plot uh plot matter to it and so we'll just have to wait and see you know uh, it's it's tough because when you have a schedule to film and then something like a pandemic hits it sort of blows everything up and it's kind of like all the actors are now spread out and you have to reschedule a shooting window to get all the actors back in and a lot of these actors they've got other projects that they've already put on their books mm. you know that they're going to be in so it, it is it's it's really hard if you know, a production gets put on hold, it's really hard to get those actors back at the same time working together because they're not sitting still either. They're, they're on other projects. Yeah. So. 
Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And then I'm sure, I don't know how long the COVID protocols are going to go. I heard about how yeah. the night, the average nightmare now of an actor is Tom Cruise under their bed yelling at him because that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I give, I give Tom Cruise a little bit of credit on a couple of things. First of all, I heard, um, I'm pretty sure my, re my, uh, my resources are pretty accurate. Um, he actually put a lot of his own money into mm. protocols for the COVID, for the set. In fact, I heard he like spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. He rented, rented two cruise ships and had them docked and used both of those cruise ships as housing for the cast and crew of while they were filming. So, you know, to keep them all in one place and keep them all under protocol and everything. So, you know, hey, somebody's going to spend a couple of hundred grand of their own money. Yeah, they have every right to blow up a little bit here and there. So, you know, oh, yeah, my kind dad, of sort of. Important. Yeah, my dad blew up over way cheaper things. So, I, <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. But yeah, I'm sure that it's even difficult that with like you had said, actors are more spread out. They've got other things yep. going on. So trying to regroup them. I also heard that actors are um, uh, oh, not just actors, but some people that live in New York, some people that live in LA, they've started to just move to other cheaper places, maybe where they were grow growing up or whatever, because mm -hmm. it's just so expensive and they were challenged with finding work or steady streams of income so yeah um, yeah that's i mean that's why my brother moved to atlanta uh georgia and the atlanta area has been booming with film and uh so you know i i i, I may get there myself this year i don't know i may go to florida and work down in the south i don't know it's you know california's still got some pretty strict protocols but a lot of the filming is either up in canada now or it's it's on locations in a lot of places, you know, for example, Yellowstone, which is my favorite right now. That's really what I'm really, really trying to get on that show, but they film out in Montana, you know, for the most part. And, mm. and a couple of, uh, there's a couple of films in Oklahoma going on. New Mexico is really big, you know, it depends on the state and what kind of incentives they want to give these production companies. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I remember hearing about with New Mexico, with Breaking Bad, where they had talked mm -hmm. about, oh yeah, we were gonna do it in California. I think it was California, but then it was just so expensive and New Mexico gave some incentives. So then they ended up filming mm -hmm. there. And then I think with Georgia too, like you had said, they're saying that's like the Hollywood of the East now because yeah. so much stuff yeah. is being filmed there. Which is Everybody thought Florida was gonna be that back in the uh, early nineties. They thought Florida was gonna be the place to film because it was a right to work state. And so they didn't have to follow as stringent union rules and, mm -hmm. and they were building sound stages everywhere. And, you know, I did a, I did an HBO miniseries in 1998 called from the earth to the moon and, um, you know, produced by Tom Hanks. And that was done at wow. the Disney studios there. So, and some of the stuff out of Cape Canaveral, obviously, but yeah. I mean, you know, they were, they were shooting a couple of, so they were shooting a TV series called Point Break mm -hmm. um, up in uh, Jacksonville, I think it was. So, mm. and then uh, Sequest, that was a TV series, Sequest, starring Roy Scheider, and that was filmed at Universal Studios. And of course, Nickelodeon had all their programming was being done there at the Nickelodeon Studios end up. So, yeah, there was, gosh. So yeah, there was a lot of stuff. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I remember when I was a kid seeing that that globe what, for a lot of the Nickelodeon shows in, in mm -hmm. Florida. And, huh, fascinating. Well, I was going to ask one more question before we get into the advice. Post-COVID, things start to lighten up. Everyone gets vaccinated, herd immunity, um, uh, assuming we don't all die. What are your plans? <laughs> you had mentioned <laughs> possibly going to Georgia, um, you know. What are you hoping to do? And and uh, well, let's, I'm let's I'm I'm battling that. I'm hoping that I don't have to because I can't stand mosquitoes, man. Those suckers are just the worst. And uh, I, I I I had a traumatic experience as a kid with mosquitoes. I was I was out screwing around outside in my house. We were throwing frisbees back and forth, and I busted my bedroom window of all the windows in the house. I broke my bedroom window, 
And as punishment, my dad made me sleep with no window repair for one night in the heat of the summer. And I woke up in the middle of the night and there were like at least 30 mosquitoes flying around the corners of all the room. <laughs> and I was freaking out. I didn't sleep all night. I was like eight or nine years old or something like, no, that was about 12. And, and it was just, it's, it was hysterical. My mom came into my room at like one in the morning, turns the light on. I've got a can of bug spray. I'm standing on my bed, shooting all the bugs up in the corner, just freaking out. Oh, but, no. yeah. So I'm not a mosquito fan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Fair, fair to say I, I haven't met a mosquito fan yet, but I am also very anti mosquito. I remember when I was a kid, I got stung so badly on a camping trip. I came uh -huh. back to school and the red, I was covered in red dots. The principal thought yeah. I had chicken pox and they were like, he's got to go home. And I was like, no, it's just mosquito bites. Yeah. And apparently Arizona, we, my wife and I, we, we just moved back here a couple of years ago from Jersey. We both worked in New York and we moved back here, horrible mosquito infestation. And especially in the monsoon season, I remember really? we were going and we used to live in a condo and there was a gym. So I would walk from the apartment to the gym. And I remember clouds of mosquitoes and I didn't realize it until I was halfway there. So I was like, should I run back? Should I run to the gym? So I just sought yeah. refuge in the gym, swatting away mosquitoes. And I, oh, God, was that was in Arizona. Uh, yeah. Was in Arizona? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, I, that's really un, un, uh, I mean, unheard of as far as from what I've heard of because it's so dry down there. I didn't think that, uh, but then again, monsoons will bring out all the bugs. That's true. I guess this is where the, the old bugs come to retire because it's just <laughs> full of them. And I, I, my friend, he is getting into real estate and he does flips and stuff. And I was walking a property with him and I was asking him questions and I was asking, oh, you guys have all this work to do on the house, but you, you fixed the pool and filled it immediately. What's up with that? And he's like, there are planes and helicopters that go over neighborhoods and houses to check to make sure a pool doesn't have just a little bit of water that the uh -huh. green water and it's not treated because yeah. mosquitoes will just flock there because yep. of the infestations that we have. And then they'll yeah. just wreak havoc on everybody close with them. So. Dang, that's guess, crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, New, New Jersey and New York, I grew up as a kid in Connecticut and uh, we used to go, uh, we used to do summers at Lake Pacong up in, uh, uh, northern part of New Jersey there, or middle middle part of the state. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah, in the summers, yeah. I mean, I'm dating myself, but we used to go there for Fourth of July weekend, and uh, we'd go to the the. They had a this really cool uh, Bertrand's Island. It was kind of had had the roller coasters and the kid rides and everything. It was an, yeah. an amusement park of days gone by. I mean, you know, they obviously bulldozed it under and put condos up. I think. But it was a great place to grow up as a kid. And we'd go to visit family and friends up there at the lake. And I just, all I remember are the lightning bugs and the mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that I'm married, my, my wife, she's much more prepared than I am. So we always bring bug spray. But I remember sure. those two things in Jersey as well. And, it, you know, uh, Jersey gets a bad rap, I think, in a lot of cases. Yeah. But... I yeah. loved living there and going down yeah. to the Jersey shore for the, the weekends and going to the beach, the ocean. It was, it was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, the area that I lived in Connecticut was so rural. I mean, it was like, it was like stepping back into the pilgrim era. I mean, we lived in this teeny little town called Monroe and they had a little oh. town, town green there. It was like Mayberry it really was. It was something down in Norman Rockwell. And it was a great place, but uh, I mean, obviously things grow and get congested and, but there is, there's areas up, up there in, in upstate New York and New Jersey that are just, just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Yes. Yes. Oh man. A little splash of nostalgia coming over. Yeah, I know. I didn't yeah. expect to talk about that, but Hey, that's great. <laughs> that was yeah. a great, yeah, that was great to wash us off of the mosquito talk. Cause uh, I yeah, yeah. So PTSD. started itching here for a minute. I'm like, oh, all right, let's get out of this conversation. Let's move on. 
All right. Well, speaking of itches, some of our fans are itching for us to be able to give some advice. So we're going to go ahead and answer some questions. But before the questions, I usually like to get me and my guests inspired with a nice inspirational quote. So I've got one here. But in case my guests have any, I usually open up the floor to them to see if they have any inspirational quotes that help them through their dark days or just get them motivated when they're just not feeling it. So, Tim, do you have any inspirational quotes? <laughs> yeah, you know, get what gets me through the day is different types of music. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't really, uh, you know, my my mom stuck that serenity prayer on my wall, you know, every day. You know, grant me the ability to control what I can and what I can't, and yeah, you know, whatever I can't control, just offer it up and forget about it. But uh, as far as quotes in and of themselves, uh, you know, <laughs> one of my favorite quotes is uh, from Back to the Future, you know, when he says, Doc, you built a time machine out of a DeLorean. I mean, that's one of the greatest quotes in the, in the history of film. <laughs> it really is. So uh, it, it, as a matter of fact, that, that movie is extremely inspirational to my career. Um, I mean, that when I, in the summer of 1985, I had just finished my first year and I was like, you know, out of oceanography and I'd just gone into journalism and I'd watched that movie over the summer of 85 and I go, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be an actor. And, you know, <laughs> that was it. That was Doc Brown and Marty McFly totally influenced my career path. Oh, that's awesome. That's really yeah. cool. Oh man, I'm I'm yeah. very glad you I'm glad for you that you didn't get into oceanography because it just oh sounds... god I would be I I probably would look the same I'd probably <laughs> look like some some ocean seafaring captain uh, but I, you know losing his marbles though <laughs> you know so I it, definitely would would probably look much the same that is, yes that is an ironic twist you've you've ended up appearance wise to look yeah, like yeah. A, an oceanographer yeah, beautiful yeah i just well, had a, i just had a com i just had a commercial audition for a sea captain a couple of days ago so i'm going okay <laughs> there we go getting back to the water love it i hope you make a splash there well yeah. thank you for the inspirational quote i've got one too this is not by any person or, for, or from any movie this is actually by a robot and the robot's name is inspire robot and its main purpose in life is to take ai and use some of the wisest words known to man or woman and just mash them together for a sometimes insightful sometimes nonsensical quote so I'll read this quote, and then Tim, you can help decipher what you think it means. <clears throat> so Inspire About This Week says, say a prayer for who you want to say a prayer for. Hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> say a prayer for who you want to say a prayer for. Oh, man. That's, that's, very, uh, that's very philosophical. Um, what to decipher what I think that means is uh, pray for your choices and your decisions that you're going to make in life by, I want to say, by praying that others make you a better person, praying that you surround yourself with others. That's kind of sort of what I decipher at. Mm. Yeah. That is very profound and very much less selfish than what I was thinking, because what I was thinking is there are so many people that might say, hey, please send thoughts and prayers. Please yeah. pray for me, blah, blah, blah. And they're just the list grows on and on and on. And it can be yeah. exhausting. And you're by the time you go to bed at night and you're like, OK, where are my thoughts and prayers going? And you've got this long list. You're like, oh, no. And you don't have time and you get stressed. So I was thinking, Inspire Bot was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Start with who you want to pray for, and then you can continue to uh, down yeah. the line. You know, so. if you can't pray for yourself, then how are you going to be in the position to pray for other people? So exactly. If your spiritual you battery isn't charged, then you can't charge other people's. Yeah, I tell my kids that every day. I say, you know what? The first person that you have to take care of is yourself. Because if you can't take care of yourself, you're not going to be in the position to take care of others. 
Oh man. I, oh, I love that advice. And, and I feel yeah. like you have very lucky children because I feel that it's so important. And sometimes I feel a little selfish for trying to take care of myself, whether it's um, doing something I'm passionate about or yeah. doing something that really helps revitalize me. But yep. when I think about it from the perspective of, do I want to be in the presence of other people miserable thinking about the things that I wanted to do and didn't do? Or be with them in their presence and and be able to be jovial and cheery and spread my love and joy. So I totally yeah. agree with your statement. Yeah, but it's hard. I mean, we're human beings. I mean, there's been days when I've sat here and just grudged on everybody. You know, oh, I hate you and I hate you and I hate you. Know? And then you sit there and you, after you finish pointing fingers at everybody, you sit back and you go, oh, that felt good. And then you sit there and you go, all right, now what? Oh, oh yeah. How about putting a little blame on yourself? And then you start doing that and then you feel better. And then, then you can move on and you can have some peace, but it, it does. It always ends, starts and ends with you. And in uh, somewhere in between, yeah, yeah. You can throw a little blame here or there, but in the end, it always comes back. It's always on you. Agreed. Right? It's like a big yeah. old, that's why the you goes like this because it starts with you and ends with you. That's yeah. And remember, one finger pointing, there's there's fingers pointing back at you, right? Oh, there you go. That's it. Gosh, <laughs> just tons, tons of little little advice little tidbits. nuggets, little nuggets, right? Man, God, I it's should like uh, I should like go to uh, what is it? I should move over and be one of the, those monks, you know, one of those uh, 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 philosophers and uh, sit with the Dalai Lama, you know, and. <laughs> and exchange oh. all of these things <laughs> i i love it and you could give it that badass look too so you could be yeah. the badass monk and you could just have these little quips and sayings that wouldn't have monk... to shave my head it's already there you know? <laughs> so as long as they don't mind the facial hair these guys you know but i don't know I, orange and red i don't know if those are my colors so, you know the robes and that's yeah that's fair you know i mean make your own you've got the own st your style with the beard because i don't think the monks maybe yeah i don't know why they don't have beards but you've got yours so make your yeah, own. yeah i don't know how the heck they shave too i mean you know what do they got they go into the uh, bathroom and they grab out a big uh you know four blade triple blade and uh <laughs> Or do they have some? Do they have some kind of a drink tea or something that they drink and it just falls off, so they never have to shave? You know, kind of, kind of do it for internally. I don't know. Oh, that would be. <laughs> there probably is some sort of tea that does yeah. that, and I would like yeah. that because shaving every day is very annoying. For oh me. man, yeah, yep. But I, <laughs> anyway, good, good tidbits. This is great. We'll we'll workshop that. But I've got some questions from fans that they've sent in. This first one is from our fan Sandy. And uh, she found it on Reddit. And this one says, how do I, and I'm an 18 year old male, get over my anxiety of talking on the phone? I have to make an important phone call into an office. However, I have bad social anxiety that extends to talking over the phone. It is probably since most people my age text, but what are some ways that I can muster up the courage to make this call? <sighs> Tim, have you ever had anxiety talking on the phone? Oh, I, I've never had anxiety talking on the phone. I did have a job uh, where I was, this was very young in my career where I was just trying to make money and survive, where I actually did play one of those, I, I not play, I actually had a job as a uh, solicitor phone caller. And uh, that job lasted about 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, God, I went down the list and I was like, hello, Mr. Smith, how are you today? And uh, click, <laughs> as soon as you, as soon as you get through the, and how are you today? It was a click, you know, and after about 35 clicks and one old lady yelling at me that, I don't know, I can't remember specifically something about her dog. I don't know. But I said, that I can't do this. I said, it's, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a good actor. I could take rejection, but I can't take the non interactive rejection. Mm. But uh, my advice for Sandy would be, you can't picture them in their underwear because you're talking over the phone, though, and so that doesn't work, like the old stage uh, thing, the stage fright. But what I say to myself is the person you're going to be talking to, 
in a hundred years, they're going to be taking a dirt nap just like you, and it won't matter. I just, you know, I sit there. That's what I do. When I, when I sit there and I go on an audition, I go, you know, a hundred years from now, this is going to be the most irrelevant moment in history. I say, so what you have to do is you have to, you have to believe that your mortality and their mortality puts you on equal ground, puts you on equal footing, that the person at the other end of that phone is no less or no more human than you are. And that puts you on an equal footing. So it should basically give you the frame of mind is, is I'm just talking to another homo sapien. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. I you're like just that. Talking, you're just talking to somebody else. It's got blood, flesh, goes to the bathroom like you, eats like you. Well, you'd think they would. Who knows? Everybody's got their fetishes, but you know, <laughs> you know I was going to say too, I've never heard dirt nap before, but I think that is the, the gentlest euphemism for death that I've ever heard. I love it. Grandma, grandma's taking a dirt nap, son. So yes. she's, she yeah. won't be able to come to the phone. I also <laughs> think that it, you can't, to your point, you can't imagine them in their underwear because it's over the phone, but no. you can actually be in your underwear, which I think yeah. makes me feel the most comfortable. You could maybe you could pull a Tom Cruise sliding down in risky business on his hardwood floor. Maybe add the socks, whatever you want, but get comfortable to where you feel silly enough, where you can be like, you know what? This is just a silly phone call and I'm yeah. in my underwear. So I, I would say make your favorite sandwich, put it right in front of you, make the phone call while you're staring at your favorite sandwich or your favorite food. You know, maybe you got it. Maybe you love pizza. Order a pizza. Put it right in front of you so that you're smelling. You're smelling the beautiful aroma of the pizza, and that and and, and that that makes the call insignificant. You know, because you've got something more important right in front of you. Exactly. And if you yeah. feel nervous while you're talking with them, take a little bite. Take a little nibble. That'll help you bring you back into your Zen zone, your Zaw yeah. Zen zone. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Yeah, or, you know, have a little bottle of scotch next to you. I don't know, right? Get if wasted. Sandy's a, if Sandy's older, <laughs> yeah, get, oh, don't get wasted. Yes. <laughs> then you'll say something you'll regret on the phone. <laughs> you'll feel way too comfortable. No, backtrack. Maybe a sip or two. Okay. That's I good. would. I would absolutely just. You know, food is really great, and also music. Play your favorite song, literally, mm. like maybe two or three times right before you make that phone call, play your favorite song, because that's going to get you in a happier mood. It's going to get you in the frame of mind where, Hey, you know what? No matter how this phone call goes, I got my favorite song right there and I'll play it again afterwards. Or, you know, just something that you really love food, music, whatever it is, and have that right next to you, have it right by you. It's, it's going to act sort of like a, a buddy, you know, to coach mm -hmm. you through it. I yeah. Love this. And I am jazzed to make my next call now. I would feel excited <laughs> to call people if this was the case. Um, just make sure to limit yourself if you're going to do food. Um, yeah. If, do like one uncomfortable phone call a day. Because if you're eating like six pizzas, that's going to be bad. And you're going to feel uncomfortable <laughs> in another way. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. And, and, you know, also sit in your favorite room in the house, you know, Sit if you have a favorite chair, if you have a favorite space. I mean, it could be a beanbag chair in your living room, or for all you know, maybe it's a stool in your garage in front of all your tools. I don't know, but it, wherever it is, put sit in the most comfortable place that you love in your house. Everybody's got a favorite space in their house. Everybody does. And if it's the toilet, hey, who cares, right? Uh, th yeah, hey, that seat of choice. <laughs> I mean, that's where you should feel the most relaxed technically. Exactly. So. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, ha I have, we all have uncomfortable moments on the toilet. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's, it's a little bit of give and take. There's some good days and bad days. Exactly. I will say one of my favorite spots now is my wife and I invested in a hammock. Well, two hammocks, one for me and nice. one for her. I, I love those things. I've never used one before. And I feel yeah. as comfortable as I did in the womb. Probably. I don't remember that, but I feel embraced yeah. in a way that I just, I'm all, yeah. I'm just missing the umbilical cord, but it's wonderful. <laughs> so I feel like I could take 
any call I wanted from a hammock and I would be good. Yeah, it'd be tough to get out of that thing too. I mean, you get so comfortable, you just don't want to get out. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. It's so nice. <laughs> it's so nice. All right. Well, I feel like we gave loads of advice to this person. So good luck. We're going yeah. on to our next and last question. This one is found by a fan, Laura. Thank you, Laura. She found it on Reddit. It said, what would be some good stag do activities to do at home with friends? I have about four friends I will be inviting to a stag do. I want to do something in the day. And ideally, I would like to spend the evening at home with my friends where we eat pizza, maybe some board games, and of course, some alcohol. I would love to have some other stuff to do, though, to make it an evening they'll never forget. Like, is there anything I could arrange for the day? Is there anything else we could do? A stag do? I, I have no idea. I'm probably too old, but I don't even know what a stag do is. I have never heard this in the United States, but I heard some English gentlemen, British gentlemen say a stag do. Well, they said a stag party. And I think that's yeah, I know a, what that is. Yeah. Okay. That's, all I, got. that's like a bachelor party, isn't it? A stag yeah, party. Yeah yeah. 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 So I don't know what a stag do is. That's it almost okay. reminds me of like a hairstyle similar to a deer. I don't know. Okay. So this but, is Laura, right? Her Laura. Laura found the question. Laura. Okay. The stag doer, I'm not sure what his name is. Stag, okay. Stagley, Stanley, Stagley. I'm not sure. <laughs> so but, is it an all guys party or is it a mixed couples party or what all, is it? It's, all it's guys. Gonna be all guys. Okay. All right. All guys party. You don't want any. You, the only the only games that the guys are going to want to play is beer pong. Okay. If they're a young group of guys. Just, just set up a big table and get a lot of solo cups and get a lot of beer. And some ping pongs, and uh, you know what? It's it's like uh, they'll they'll be busy all night, you know. It's just like your cat with a laser pointer, just uh, <laughs> give him that, and he'll he'll be good to go for a couple hours. Um, other than that, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, if the objective is to have a lot of fun, um, you, first of all, you you find what all the guys have in common, what they like, if they have a specific sport in mind. Mm. Um, you know, maybe they want to, uh, maybe they want to attend a sport event or, well, of course with the pandemic, I don't know if that's possible. Um, yeah. but then again, you can all get together and watch maybe, uh, maybe they like, if they like, uh, soccer or football or, you know, uh, they can, they can corral and play some games that involve that. Um, that's a good idea. And I'm trying to stay away from the, uh, you know, the, <laughs> uh, you know, a bunch of guys. There's only there's only like three or four things that guys really like, and it's uh, food, sports, sex, and what sleep. I guess I, I, something like cars. Sometimes they like car, you know, automobiles or cars. So find out what the group collectively like shares in common, and then go from there. Because I mean, it, it, you're not going to please everybody. Right. Um, Send a poll and, and be like, do you like food? sex cars <laughs> all of the above and see what they answer the most and then whatever that is. this place is gonna be it's gonna be beer pong and strippers uh, <laughs> okay. yeah you know you're adults you know i don't, I don't want to tell you what to do but um you know if this is a stag do there's definitely got to be some some you know some machismo events going on in there something that's you know Get them, uh, get them something that's going to keep them all, you know, excited and interested. And uh, yeah, definitely. Um, Agree. If, if the guy's going to get married or something, if there's something like that, then yeah, you got to do the bachelor party kind of thing. Maybe a pub crawl that ends up somewhere, and you know, <laughs> it's just uh, yeah, yeah. Organize something that has backup plans for for intoxication like ubers or you know make sure that everything is done in a safe manner and, and nobody's gonna you know end up the next day missing or in another country somewhere <laughs> those, are the, those are the worst for that person they're the best for the others they get to tell the yeah. story but yeah. yeah yeah i mean it's it's tough because it's a pandemic so you know if, you, if you're pretty much restricted to inside then i would try to bring as many outside type events and just miniaturize them, you know, mm. bring them into a smaller area 
Beer pong is a great thing to have fun with. I mean, you can only play so much of it, you know, make sure you have a good list of music. You know, if you guys are all going to be hanging out there, I, I would definitely say get a consensus on the music you guys want to listen to and make sure you have a, enough time for that. Um, uh, lots of junk food. Yeah, lots of junk food. I would definitely, you definitely want to have the salty and the sweet mixed mm -hmm. together so that they go back and forth, you know, while they're drinking. So cakes and Doritos or Fritos and chips like that. And yeah, man, just, you know, find out, just get little tidbits from everybody and listen. That's what I do every time for my wife when I can't figure out what to get her for Christmas. I spend the whole year like listening to her. What was that? Oh yeah, you like that? Okay. You write it down in your little notepad and stick it away. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden when Christmas comes around, she's like, oh my God, you remembered, you know? <laughs> That's, you know what I do? I go on her Pinterest boards. I sneak on there and see what she likes and what she's pinned. Unfortunately, I don't know if this translates because I don't know if Brad and Chad have Pinterest boards about what they like to do at Stag Do's. However, I feel like you have just given a smorgasbord of a splendid ideas. And I loved miniaturizing the, the events that you would do going out during a pen and in a pandemic, making them all at home. So yeah. do, I mean, if you want to miniaturize, if you guys like soccer, foosball, if you guys like yeah. uh, basketball, beer pong, make yep. sure that you have your salties, your, your savories, your sweets, your beers, yep. maybe yep. some hard alcohols, make sure yep. that maybe buy a couple hammocks for people to sleep if they need a place to spend the night or a sleeping That's bag. Right. Let's make and sure when you drill into the walls, you make sure you hit the studs. Yes, that's right. Or else you're going to have a couple, <laughs> couple thuds of your compadres. So make sure that the hammocks are built right. And yeah, I think other than that, you guys should all have a good time. I think it's the quality time that you're spending with the people that you choose to yeah. is the key factor. And as long as you yeah. let them know that after five games of beer pong, then I think you're going to be in a good spot. It'll be a yeah. successful stag do. Yeah. Well, if you're going to be any part of this, if there's going to be a bunch of guys and you're hosting this thing, just, just lock your door, go into your bedroom, lock the door <laughs> and just say, all right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. And make sure you have about 30 romantic comedy movies that you can hang out and watch up there and on your TV in your room while they're just going off the wall. Exactly. Doing their stag things or yeah. whatever the vernacular is. Oh, well, well, Tim, this was an absolute blast, but we've come to the end. So I just wanted to say huge thank you for joining and, and uh, helping give some advice. Hey, no problem. Happy to help. I was also going to ask, what have you got going on? What would you like to plug? Uh, what would you like to tell my audience? Gosh. You know, this, this pandemic's just wiped everybody out for a whole year, but I'm, I'm coming back online. Um, I've, I'm anticipating some more projects this coming year. Uh, I have a two, that, two projects that are in post-production and will probably be out at some film festivals. They're both short films that I produced and, uh, and was part of. And, um, but for the most part, I would say just, hey, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on uh, my IMDb page. Go check it out. IMDb.me backslash Timothy McLaughlin. You can see my stuff that I'm going to put up there. Follow me on Instagram if you want. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm going to follow you back more than, more than likely, unless you're a crazy stalker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I'm not a huge social media guy, but mm -hmm. Instagram is where I usually post my, I'll post some of my uh, family stuff and I'll also post some of my professional stuff. And uh, that is, uh, you can find that on um, Instagram is at the Timothy Mac. And there you can find me. So uh, yeah, just, you know, give me a follow. Say you saw the show. You can also send me uh, messages there if you want. Cause I think once you follow each other you can message each other. And uh, if you had any other questions and uh, you want me to uh, plan your stag party or maybe you want me to make the phone call for you. Uh, you know oh he does both I i'll do it, it in a scottish accent or something you know hey how you doing laddie <laughs> calling yeah. for a sunday <laughs> is this the dmv of auckland <laughs> <laughs> love it 
Oh, well, Tim, it was an absolute blast. If you want to hang on for about 30 seconds after I say goodbye to my audience, we can, you know, do a little chit chat of post episode details. But audience, you guys have been great listeners. I am so happy you decided to stick it all the way through. And, and thank you guys so much. Love you guys. Please be careful if you're making any uncomfortable phone calls or planning your stag do parties. But other than that, we love you guys. And we'll talk at you next week. Bye-bye. Take care. Oh, and see. Tim, that was awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, I'm glad. Glad it worked out. I'm glad oh. it worked out. The sun, the sun set and I started getting darker. Sorry about that as it went along. I have no idea why. And this is the best room because it's the least acoustic. And oh. my, my son has a, uh, I mean, he's got mission control up in his bedroom. So sometimes I get to get up there and get on the mic and the headphones.